Hey guys, uh, just wanted to give you a peek on how our packing is going. And uh, let me just turn the camera around and I'll show you. All right, here's our living room. Lots of boxes. And we still need to go through some of these and um, maybe condense a little better. But we've taken all the photos off the walls. Uh, that's not our poster, so that one's still up. But this area also being used a lot of uh, a lot of boxes that we were able to get um, from friends from Mars's work things like that which is great it's really helping us save a lot what I wanted to do is just make a quick note so I'm packing this thing here I got this um, glass uh, beverage dispenser I put a bunch of cookie cutters in there to fill the space but what I wanted to talk about was packing materials right Cause they get expensive but we get this stuff in the mail all the time I'm sure you guys do too, flyers and things. So I started saving these several months back and I have just bags full of these and the bags themselves, by the way, I will use too. I just want to point that out. It's a real easy way, free uh, packing material. And I'm just gonna line the sides of this container here and I use it for other boxes as well um, in lieu of actual like packing materials like peanuts or the little airbag things. So. Anyways, just pointing that out, I'm going to try to uh, show you guys a little bit more as we go through this. It's been a little chaotic. Uh, I don't always film because as I'm going through this stuff, uh, sometimes it's it's difficult um, to try to film and, and actually be productive. But um, anyways, just a quick note, we bought this package of boxes and uh, yeah, we're just going to keep, keep packing as best we can. We're... Um, I'm gonna attempt to take this neon sign home. Uh, I just really like it. I thought about selling it. I hope it doesn't break, but we'll see. I'm actually, if you peek back here, all my stuff, I'm building a wood crate for it, and that's a sheet of foam. So I'm, I'm gonna see if I can't get it there safely, but we shall see. And uh, anyways, just a quick update. All right, I'm gonna dismantle the kitchen table. It's an Ikea table, so it's pretty easy. Gonna just unbolt it and then uh, tape the legs and tape it inside of the table so that we don't lose the hardware or the legs. All right, we're taking a load to the uh, storage unit. Uh, what we've been doing, we got a second unit. I think we told you guys and uh, we've been loading up the car as best we can. My trunk's full too. Here we are at the uh, public storage place. You uh, come through the gate over there into your code. Here's where we're parking at the moment. And then you exit out this way and around the building, but in here is the uh, elevator. And there's other elevators depending upon where you need to go in this facility, but it's three stories and quite large. Right, here's our second load. So we're at our second storage unit. Nispers! <laughs> I just kind of wanted to show you, this is how we're doing it. Um, we got several dollies. So I got this one here in the front that folds down into a cart, but it's also a normal like dolly or hand truck. And then we got this one here, it's like a floor dolly. So these are really helpful. We got several of each actually. And so stickers. yeah, and Mars uh, did a lot of work. So she made these labels. So be color coordinated and location coordinated. These will also go on the doors just to make things quick and easy when we move in. And then uh, here's our unit. So we do have two units. We have this one and the one in Santa Clarita. We didn't plan it this way, but it's just how it worked out. And both units are kind of small. This one's five by 10. And we just started loading it last night. So this is our basically our second run out here. Um, I guess we could have gotten like one larger unit had we known we were gonna do it this way, but we didn't know. So. Anyways, just wanted to give you an update, and this will this will be in the probably the one big video of just us preparing to move. Hey guys, so it is uh, March fourteenth, two thousand twenty-two, and uh, one of the items that we need to do before we make the move to Florida is selling Mars's car. Um, several reasons for that. 
one we um we just didn't want to pay to ship a second car also it doesn't have like a long range to it so it's just a good opportunity for us to get rid of it it did well for us here but not sure we need it in florida anyways it's been a great little car it can actually hold quite a bit because of the hatchback so we both enjoy that aspect of it um it's a 2012 mitsubishi uh i miev is the make and model and um yeah it's it's kind of sad to see it go um we wanted to make sure though that mars doesn't need it for work or anything like that but she doesn't at this point so um we are gonna let it go but uh just want to give you guys one little last look at it buy a little car <laughs> it needs a wash um it's actually gonna be uh we're, we're actually gonna uh sell it to her parents her dad's gonna take it and use it for a little commuter car for him so we know where it's headed which is kind of cool and um anyway yeah should be pretty good i just like i said wanted to give one last look at it and show you guys i don't know that we've put it in the videos or at least if we have it's probably been pretty minimal so anyway uh one more thing to check off the list as we make what seems like kind of a long journey to our new home but um, one of the things we got to get done hey morning y'all um i'm downtown burbank gonna head to one of the uh like public works buildings and see about getting a, a street use permit or at least getting all the details for one so let's go see what we can find out all right here i'm coming up to the entrance across the street is the police and fire headquarters and then city hall is just back behind me all right so not too bad that took less than an hour um super friendly inside i appreciated it walked me through what I needed. I read a lot about it online, right? You go through, you try your best to read everything. Um, pretty much everything matched up, which is nice. Means I read it correctly, but it was still nice to ask additional questions. Just all kinds of little, you know, the little details, um, but we're all set. We're good. Got my no parking signs um, and I got my permit approved. I paid for it. So I got all of it set up. I called 1-800-PACKRAT. Um, after I got the information, I came outside, called them, change the dates to delivery so they will be dropping off um on friday the 8th and picking up on monday the 11th so that's our container move date and these uh these signs we put out prior to that along with some cones and other things but um pretty much squared away i just have to call this company to deliver the cones a day or two ahead and then call the police department to come out a day ahead to inspect that all the all the right signage is out so not too bad and again under an hour so on to my next errand this morning all right so my buddy just dropped off his trailer which we're going to be taking uh down to burbank uh with his truck so it's behind me let me show you guys what we did all right so here it is it's all packed up so obviously the gate is up here in the back here is my stuff and this is just what i had at my folks house so Got the dollies loaded up, got this cool card table. It's a bumper pool table, card table, game table all in one. It's really nice. Had it since we were all kids, between my brother and sister and I. And there's some other things. And anyways, got it all strapped down and we hit the road bright and early tomorrow. All right, so I just want to show you, this is where we're going to place the pods on this side of the street. And like I said, got my no parking signs that'll go out a few days before, and uh, we should be good to go. And those are the new towers that they're building for Warner Brothers. Uh, you can see it through the trees here. There's another one over there. Those will be uh, brand new office space. Alright, so it's Friday morning. Got our no parking signs out and it comes. The truck and trailer over here trailer we tried to just cover threw a lock on it, it says it's a deterrent obviously I couldn't do much about this but uh, I don't think anyone's messed with it at this point we're basically just waiting for 1-800 pack rat to give me a call they're supposed to give me a, a courtesy call an hour before they come to deliver the pods 
And so now we're just kind of waiting. Um, hopefully sooner than later, they have, a, they have the whole day, like a huge window. They have from 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. to come and um, uh, deliver the pods. So we'll see. So I want to make this video about the storage containers that we're going to use to ship our stuff. Um, I know when I was uh, trying to research for this stuff um, online, I was having kind of a hard time finding finding different bits of information. So we are using 1-800-PACKRAT. Um, I gave them a call a while back, maybe February um, at some point, uh, just to get quotes. Um, you know, it was tough because I didn't know what date I wanted anything sent, so I I just randomly picked some, they gave me a cost, I wrote down and took notes, um, and uh, I did compare it with pods, um, as well as uh, U-Haul and, and um, Penske and, you know, just, just other means. So we, we really, went, really went through everything, um, and this was the best one. So I'll try to give you a little bit of a breakdown, uh, more details on uh, how the process worked, what we paid, when the pods get here, or excuse me, I keep saying that, but when the shipping containers get here from 1-800-PACKRAT, I will uh, give you a video of that and try to give you some more detail. Try to uh, try to provide some stuff that I couldn't find when I was doing my research in hopes that it helps you on your next move. So stay tuned. All right, so here's the street <laughs> and a squirrel. Um, it's a little over 100 feet. I think it's somewhere around um, like 120 feet or so from the curb to the other curb. So I have plenty of space. I'm getting one 16 foot long container and one eight foot long container. Both containers are eight feet wide and eight feet high. They need a space of 55 feet in order to drop off the container. And there can't be any obstructions like trees or anything else that are in that direct path. So I have a nice clear path here, um, no problems. You get, you actually get a long time. You get up to one month. Um, the permit with uh, any fees and everything, basically, I think it was 167, 164, something, something like that. Um, I'll try to look it up and put it at the bottom of the screen there, but. Um, that's what it cost me and I'm only doing it from Friday to Monday so what happens is once they approve the permit they give you these tow away temporary no parking signs they tell you to put the permit number at the top the date and time range um, which they weren't specific so I honestly wasn't sure if I could say all day like you know 12 a.m. to 11 59 p.m. but I, I did a pretty wide range just to make sure there's the dates uh, reason storage container of course and I posted them early I posted them on Tuesday my roommate actually helped me post them since I was out of town so I appreciated that very much thank you again to my roommate Rosalinda and um, basically the way it works is you need they told me in this case based on the distance that I needed four no parking signs and I actually could have posted them to the trees I also needed four of these pylon cones to go at the corners of the two containers that are on the street side. So I'm actually using one cone right now for the trailer, but just because. Um, and basically that's that's all that was required. They had given me a sheet that had said that I needed like an A-frame type uh, stand that had like a light on it. But when I talked to the guy, he, uh, he actually said that it wasn't necessary. He said, just use the the orange pylon cones that that would be sufficient I said cool they did give me a sheet of a place that I could rent the cones from it was something like four dollars a uh, per cone per day so just for the eight cones that I was gonna get it was gonna be you know another hundred something dollars uh, and then the um, a-frame little signs they have the light the blinking light on top if I were to get those I think those were something like like eight dollars eight dollars um a sign per day and i just wasn't going to do any of that so uh luckily um i have some resources that i can reach out to and i was able to obtain these cones 
So they are free. I am basically borrowing them from someone else uh, from their job and it's great. So I'm grateful for it. Um, so happy I was able to do that and um, I will return these when I'm done with them. So it saved me some money, but it was required. I didn't have a choice. I had to have the cones. So that's kind of the setup. Um, if I'm missing anything, I'll try to add it here. Uh, that's kind of the prep work of what I needed to do in order to get these shipping containers scheduled for arrival. The other thing is the city of Burbank requires a COI or certificate of insurance. They want to make sure if the shipping container company comes and delivers this stuff and they, they break the sidewalk, they crack it or chip it or hurt a tree or a telephone pole, right? Basically, if they cause any damage, they want to make sure they can cover it and pay it. So when I did talk to the guys downtown, um, they asked me, hey, what company are you using? I told them and they said, perfect. We already have them on file. We have an updated COI. You are good to go. So that is something to keep in mind. If you use a smaller, maybe lesser known company, um, just check with the local authorities that you are allowed to use them and you don't need to obtain any further information. Had they not had them on file, I would have had to call 1-800-PACRAT and request the, the documents and you know i don't know how long that would take but i'm glad i didn't have to go through that but just a note for those of you looking to do this definitely check um the other thing is is once i put these cones out or again my roommate she helped me out once she put these out on tuesday i called that very afternoon and i told i had to call the city of burbank traffic department and tell them that hey the cones are out it's all set here's the details they asked me a couple questions just to confirm everything and basically the idea is, is I think uh, they sent someone out to check it, right? And he, he even told me, he says, if not, um, we will only reach out to you if something's wrong or we have a question. And I never heard from him. Today's Friday, my permit is active. So I'm making the assumption that they checked and that everything was good. So again, that's kind of how it works, at least for me. Uh, check your city and area um, for any rules and regulations that you may need to follow for this. But that was it. So. It is uh, just past 7.30 in the morning. Like I said, the earliest they could possibly get here is 8 a.m. They told me they would give me an hour heads up basically before they deliver. So now I'm just anxiously waiting. So we'll see, I'll keep you posted. All right, so it's just after 10 a.m. Uh, the driver called me actually, um, it was close to 8.30. Uh, Lewis from 1-800-PACRAT called me, said he'd be here around 10 o'clock. So I'm just kind of hanging out, anticipating his call and uh, very nice. Um, he confirmed location of drop, confirmed I'd be here. Also asked me which way I wanted the doors of the units facing, which was great. Uh, I didn't know I was going to really have a choice, but I did have something in mind. So um, it was really nice of him to offer. And I don't know, I expect him here any minute. Both pods are containers. I keep saying pods. Both containers should be here shortly. So I'll keep you posted. Our containers arrive. These are them. And it is 10, 13 in the morning. All right, so he's got the straps off. He detached the trailer. He's gonna drop the 16 foot pod first. And he did all that in under 10 minutes. All right, so he's getting into place. He's gonna go as far back as he can. There's gonna be some angle on the truck when he unloads it. I thought that it was going to slope down. So that's pretty cool. All right, first pod is down. So he's just removing the gear and then uh, we'll do the second one. And he's off to pick up the eight foot container. He's really good. He clearly knows that truck and he maneuvers it perfectly. He pulled back to the trailer that he has the other container on. And now he's going to strap that one in and load it and bring it over here and place it. So pretty good little system that they have going on. Show you a little bit of this process. And that lift supports quite a bit. So this pod that's being loaded on is eight foot long, eight foot wide, eight foot high. And it can hold 4,000 pounds is what it says on their site and what the, uh, what the customer service reps told me that it could. While the 16 foot container over here, 16 foot long, eight foot wide, eight foot high, could hold 6,000 pounds. 
And that was the difference of why I chose 1-800 Pack Rat over Pods, over Jiffy Shell, over any of the other transport companies. It holds more weight per size. All right, so let me zoom out. All right, here's my 16 foot container. I'm gonna just show you guys around just for a quick moment. So looks like we got door latches here. So when the doors are open, you can latch them so they don't close on you. You got this handle here, and this is where you can place up to two locks. This one here, should press in, and that releases the latch and releases the handle. On the side, this is where the, the door locks are. And so you pull it out, you swing the door open until it inserts, and then you should, let's see what I got going on here. All right, it's hard to do this with one hand. There, I think I heard it click, no? Should come in there, sorry. You do that and it locks it and it prevents the door from swinging open. So it doesn't, it shouldn't go wider than the edge or at least not by a lot. Here's my cones, by the way, that I placed out. So here's this, here's the inside. Let me open this door. So here's what it looks like on the inside. So it should be about every four feet. There should be tie downs and there is. So here's what it looks like. There are tie downs in the center, in the rear. There's some uh, hardware that's holding it together. And the reason I'm pointing all this out is for me, when I was researching, what I really wanted to know was how much room do I really have? So in other words, the wall is here, right? So from the wall to the other wall is a certain distance, but this is here. So what is this distance? And that's the stuff I'm gonna share with you. Here's the other tie down. So again, this should be about every four feet based on the size of the container. You want to strap, put straps across to hold the weight so that instead of all 6,000 pounds moving in here, it's broken up into smaller chunks. All right, and here's the opening and it goes pretty flush with the opening. So if you look here, there's the front edge. There's not much obstructions. Most of the bolts are hidden or off to the side like this, so it's not gonna be a hindrance, it's not gonna tear your box. I'm gonna use one of these distance meters, turn on, and notice it's gonna measure from the base here, so where my pinky is. So let's put it, so the doors are gonna close and it's gonna be here. You can't put items outside of that. And let's see, if I get my little laser pointer going on here, see the dot? I'm gonna shine it at the end, down there. I'm gonna try to put this so that you guys can see it. So the floor is actually not 100% level, so I actually have to hold this. And I'm gonna see if I can't shoot the bottom black. So the total distance of usable space is 15.86 feet based on my reading here. All right, so if I clear it, then let's bring it back. Let's see the usable space from the edge here to the other edge, right over there. All right, so from edge to edge, it's 7.5 actually. So that's, that's smaller. Come to think of it now, maybe I was wrong. Maybe it's seven and a half feet wide. So that, that could have been my mistake, so I apologize. Let's do another read. Both containers are dropped, and there's the cones. And we'll get started shortly. All right, guys, so I'm back. It's a little bit later in the day. But uh, let's look at the eight-foot container. It's gonna operate the same way. So you push this button, pull it out. Let's go ahead and uh, see if we can use the little hinge here. Lock the door. It's harder with one hand. There you go. So this is the uh, eight by eight. Not gonna really use this much today. So <laughs> it's funny though, there's a little bit of debris in here. So whatever that is, hopefully nothing too important. Some locking washers on the floor. I mean, I don't see anything that's 
undone, but you'll notice this, actually, this bit looks like it came undone. Let's see if I can find the bolt. See the washers. Hmm. I don't know. It is missing a bolt. So one thing to point out is it is it's warm in here for sure. And you touch this, this is hot. And this is uh, just paneling, like you can see it, right? And see, it's just paneling. So there's, you know, this is it. This, the outside of it's on the other side. So it's real thin and there's not a lot to it. You can kind of see the edge of the metal here. I, it's, it's thin, you know, this is, this is, so it's gonna be affected by the, uh, the weather so you just want to uh, you know make sure there's a few notices yeah I'll distribute the weights it's interesting that it says don't don't use uh, uh, furniture plate or always use furniture sorry I misread that I read that so here's a few things so Anyway, that's the AB8 by 8, excuse me. We're, uh, we're not going to work on this one today. I'm going to try to pack this one as much as I can with the totes. So let's work on the 16, and uh, I'm just going to get it set up with the ramp and a few things and get started. All right, one more thing. Actually, I forgot to measure. So front to back, this one is a little over 8 feet, actually. You get 8 feet and almost 3 inches. It should be the exact same from left and right. So the seven and a half foot left to right, and I think I said seven or so, top to bottom. So we got a lot to work with. It's pretty great. I think I forgot to show you or really point out, they put wood on the bottom there to help level it out a little bit. So it's, it's pretty level. There is a slight lip to get into it. There's a hitch on the outside here. I just wanna show you the outside a little bit. Again, it's just metal sheeting. A few dings in it, but uh, should be waterproof from what they say. And again, there's a small step here in the beginning. So let me, so let's see. On this side, we're close to, you know, almost eight inches, about seven and a half inches here. And on this side, closer to, you know, six-ish to the lip. Right here in the middle, about six and a half. So I am gonna put a ramp on here though to help us get in and out. And again, here's another view of this. These, by the way. So this, the tie downs, they, they got tape over them. So the tie downs are, you know, almost an inch and a half vertically and the interior is about an inch. So that can tell you, I mean, you really shouldn't need hooks bigger than that. You shouldn't need tie downs any larger. Um, just trying to look at what's available. This, this just looks like kind of a bumper around. There's probably a bolt there. Again, it, it just looks like they kind of tied all of the, uh, the, uh, it just kind of looks like they tied all the tie straps down. There are these ones in the middle, so you could potentially maybe tie something in the corner area, right? You could you could kind of go from there to here, like on the ground like that, and then tie it around. So you have a little bit of option. Here's a little closer look at the ceiling. And back at the entrance. So. Um, you know, in the floor, it's pretty flush from what I can tell. There's some screws. It looks like some sort of plywood. It's got a coating on it, maybe, some kind of sheathing on it. But, um, you know, when I was when I was researching, this, that's what I wanted to know. So I do hope this information helps you guys to understand exactly what the space you have to work with, what it looks like. And, Tie straps for me were very important. You know, you kind of do the math, right? 16 foot, about how often the tie strap should be, or you can guess, but until, until I got to see it, it was really hard to know for sure. 
And I think they do mention it on their website in, in their credit. But, um, you know, hopefully it helps. You can see that there's two per, right? So there's top and bottom. So you kind of make an X with it and go across. So, anyways, I gotta get going, get this set up, and I'll be with you in a minute. All right, here's my ramp. Should get me in there pretty easily. I do recommend these. Uh, it's uh, close to $100 for this three foot ramp. I think it's about 80 bucks. This one I was able to get used, but I have a longer one, which I'll use by the house. It's a six foot ramp, but tremendous help. All right, the first stack is in. And we went pretty high. We went eight boxes high of the banker style boxes or staple style, you know, they're all kind of the same size. You do want to keep them the same size. They're over pretty far. I may scooch them, but there is some hardware down in the corner and I don't, I just don't want to puncture the boxes if I can. And uh, this is pretty great. So I pulled all this from the back, the bed of my, my buddy's truck. So we're off to a good start. You want to note, it says, putting my watch, it says it's 99 degrees outside. So we picked like the hottest day to do this stuff. But it's supposed to be less warm tomorrow. So fingers crossed our garage dun 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 it's actually not that bad you can see it's not really stacked on top of each other it's just sprawled out so it takes like a big space i have some equipment and it shouldn't be that bad let's get to it i'll show you For these ones here i'm loading them like this it's really easy put them on the dollies these are a lot of weight they're awkward sized boxes. So for now, I'm just putting them in here because I don't actually know how I'm gonna stack them in the container just yet. Just kind of wanted to point it out, especially for those that are gonna be doing their moves. Something to think about um, investing or renting in this equipment. It really makes the job easier. All right, things are coming on great. We've got two rows of these. So the baker's boxes are way back up there. There's two columns of those and then one additional one next to it in the last row. Then the rest of these pop-up boxes. And these are all the pop-ups. These are most of the flat ones. And then one larger one so far. So I think we're making really good use of the space. Let's keep going. This is insane. We've got the 16 foot as full as we can. The eight foot's almost done. Uh, we need more. I made a mistake and should have got two 16s. Coming down to the wire. Uh, we'll have some big decisions to make on how we get the rest of it there. But this is what it looks like right now. Here's my bed for the next few weeks. Here's a look at our 16 foot container. I have a couple small things I'm going to try to put in the little nooks and crannies, but uh, we packed this thing as well as anyone could. We definitely spared little space. so. I'm proud of what we did. I think we did a great job. Unfortunately, we did come up short, but uh, that's on me. We should have gotten two 16 foot containers instead of one 16 and one eight. So um, I'm just gonna have to figure out the rest. We may have to sell a few things that we were kind of on the fence of keeping anyway. So, but I wanted to show you the container. This is the eight foot container, by the way totes for days here's our Burbank storage unit uh, it's 6 by 13 it is now empty taking the last load down now and it is officially off rent as of I think tomorrow so one thing down one step closer to Florida all right so let me catch you up a little bit it is now Monday evening um, the containers should have been picked up today originally on the 11th uh, we did some rescheduling I called them this morning customer service for 100 pack rat very nice she helped me out basically what she did is she got me this 16 foot container in addition to my other 16 foot and 8 foot and because of its placement which is right behind the other two they couldn't remove these yet um, she said it didn't really make a difference for cost or anything, no additional charges. So basically they're all just going to sit here until this Friday the 15th. And with having this extra space, uh, we should be able to fit everything in here. If we can't, something's drastically wrong. So uh, I think it's all worked out. I'll give you guys a breakdown of cost and just a little bit more about my experience and, and that kind of thing. 
um, just to try to give you um, better understanding of what I went through. So, but for now, that's it. Um, I'm doing a little bit of packing. Um, again, they're picking up this Friday, so I don't have my buddy's truck and trailer and all that. So I just have my car, uh, the possibility of renting a car. It's not that uh, nothing can't fit. It's just, I got to do like a dozen trips to the Burbank storage unit. All my stuff here is ready to go so I can work on that. I just got to divvy up my time because I have to go to work this week too. That's the other thing. I'm not off. So um, I'm confident we'll get it done. Uh, just got to be creative like always. All right. So I'm back at the Burbank storage unit. I'm actually on a lunch break. Running over. I got my floor dolly and i um, just trying to gather things out. So today's Tuesday. It's a couple minutes, maybe 10 minutes after 12. Uh... And uh, let's just see what we have left. And um, the idea is to get this out um, today, tomorrow, basically. My buddy Alex is once again gonna come over tomorrow, help me load up that third container. And then I hope by the honestly end of that day, basically everything's done other than a couple small things that I might keep out until Friday. But um, that, that's it. And then all of our stuff will be headed out to Florida. But uh, let's show you the Burbank unit right now. All right, so. Still a good amount in here. This is what I got to work on. The good thing is, is those boxes in the back, those Beverly Hills ones and a few of the brown ones that are the same size. I can actually fit 12 of those in my car at a time. And actually that's not counting the front seat. So believe it or not, those boxes in the back are only two trips out here. And even some of these other ones I might be able to fit in. So my hope is, is I have, mm, I guess four trips left and that's that's not too bad and that's counting the one i'm doing right now so fingers crossed so it's wednesday morning I'm a little tired it's not that early either it's like eight o'clock but i am at the storage unit hopefully for the last time uh this should only be um mars's mini fridge and two maybe three smaller boxes so i should be able to clean it all out while i'm here I brought both keys, um, so I'll swing by the office, turn those in, and I should be completely free of this storage unit. So, trying to wrap things up here. Uh, so, um, I don't know, making good progress. Just, yeah, just feeling tired this morning. Still have, uh, you know, plenty left to do, but it's Wednesday, April 13th, and still getting stuff uh, prepared for the containers to ship out. All right, this is it. Two boxes, mini fridge. There's a, another look at it. All right, so I should definitely be able to do this in one trip and then uh, we'll be out of here. I'm not sure if I pointed this out when we, in our move-in video. And to be honest, not even sure if I posted that new move-in video. So here's how it works. They give you the, the, the key you pull the whole cylinder out and it just slides right back in and you can lock it. Um, and it slides. I've seen other people put locks in here. Um, a little bit slides in this way and then it goes here and you put another lock through there, but we didn't do that. Um, and a lot of locks here don't, there's, there's one down here. here let me show you. <clears throat> so this person did that. And they give you the red bit, um, but again, we, we chose not to do that. It was fine. So anyways, let me load this up and be on our way. Got my floor dolly and we'll get out of here. All right, heading down, there's my stuff. Got the elevator. I'm just showing you guys this again, because frankly, I can't remember if I did or not. And then you enter your code to go down. They also have a touchless version that you can set up. But I like that this elevator is huge. Big freight elevator. And this facility is also temperature controlled too. So inside it's all secure. And then we just popped out here to a, a, a basically an exterior entryway. And then um, this, this spots the park like right nearby. So.
All right, so it's Thursday morning. Um, Alex and I loaded the third container yesterday, basically to its fullest. I'm gonna see if there's a little bit of space left for a couple items that um, we just couldn't fit, but I know Mars and I would like if we could. So I don't know, it's, it's gonna be a stretch because it's pretty full. Let me show you. All right, so here it is. Here's our third container. We are packed to the max. Um, <laughs> so, so the ramp there can fit right by the dolly and, and, you know, there's a few pockets of space, but I mean, you can see we really, we really maximize this thing. So I don't, I don't know. We'll, we'll see. All right, we did it. We put a few more items in here. We we're definitely done. Uh, this space here is going to be for my vacuum cleaner because I got to clean around the house a little bit. I'll just pop it in and... And that's it, we're on our way. All right, so it's Friday the 15th. They're supposed to pick up the containers today. Uh, I loaded the last few random couple items. Um, really not much more I can put in this thing. <laughs> um, hopefully the pickup's smooth. Then our stuff's on its way to Florida. It will be stored there and i'll pay rent on storage and uh, again i'll go over these numbers uh here shortly but um should be good um as far as i'm concerned we did it a few items that we couldn't fit but uh it's okay uh, mars and i kind of had a list a short list of things that if it comes down to it we can just uh sell or give away or or whatever or junk it <clears throat> excuse me so we are going to exercise that option and uh get rid of some of the items but um Today's a big day, so it's it's exciting and a little bit nerve-wracking just in case something goes wrong or they have an issue, so um, we'll see. I'll keep you posted. All right, so it's uh, about 9 or 8.45 at this point. Uh, Lewis from 1-800-PACK-RAT, the guy who dropped off all three of these, he says he's on his way. He's only going to pick up one, and I guess another driver is going to pick up the other two. So we're about ready to load up. So I don't know if I told you or not, so I wanted to point it out to you. Uh, Mars and I invested in some of these air tags, and uh, we're gonna be tracking the, the movement of the pods just out of curiosity, not not really for anything else. Um, just kind of want to know how long it takes and all that, and I'll share that with you. Um, so that, just so you're aware, um, you know, for us, we're gonna store it so it's not as big of a deal, like how fast it gets to Florida, but uh, we want to know anyways, just like the data set. So. Uh, it's pretty cool. It runs on a battery. It says it lasts about a year and then you can replace it. So these are a great tool, I think. Uh, just keep track of your stuff. You can keep track of smaller items. You can put it on your dog. They sell dog collars and accessories. They sell keychain clips. You can put it on your luggage when you fly. Lots of different reasons people use it. Um, uh, so, you know, we're just getting started with it. So we'll share this, uh, share our experience with the AirTags as we go. But uh, he said he'd be here around 10 o'clock. So, um, I'll see them then, and then they'll take this first one away, hopefully, with no problem. And uh, I'll keep you updated when I hear from the other driver about the remaining two. This is the very first pod that got delivered, the 16 foot. I just wanted to point out the lock. So they gave us the lock. Um, he didn't give me a lock for the second one, and he said it was because he, he was short that day, unfortunately. Um, I didn't really fight him on it, but it was a little disappointing, I gotta say. Luckily though, because I had the Santa Clarita storage unit, I took that lock off and I used it here. So I'm using the same type of lock. And uh, this is the eight foot container. And then this container is much older. So I apologize that I didn't get a chance to really film it like I wanted to. In fact, I don't think I really filmed it for you guys. So I apologize. Um, it's an older container. It works the same way. It's got the, you know, double doors that open out. You can see even the lock mechanism is a little different. It's a little more banged up, which, you know, makes me a little nervous, but the seals inside seemed okay. Um, but, uh, you know, I, it should still do the trick. So let me just give you a, a wide shot of my containers. So uh, here is all of our stuff. All I'll have after this is uh, a suitcase, a carry-on, and a backpack. And then um, I'll just be living here until I can go to Florida.
And uh, I also forgot to mention earlier, so each pod has a air tag in it. It was a pack of four for a hundred dollars, so I put three of them here, and then Mars has the fourth one for the dog. I just wanted to show you guys what the tops look like. So it's more just the, the steel that goes around the sides, nothing fancy, no bolts or anything either. So I think the tops are pretty waterproof. Um, it's really about this edge here, so you know, should be fine. Rain will come down. And it's about the doors, so these have seals, so pretty good. Uh, just thought I'd show you. I uh, had my ladder here. Um, I need it inside the house uh, to do a few things. And then my buddy's going to take it. So I thought while I had it, I'll show you the top. Let me go down to the end and show you the older container too, because I have a feeling it'll look a little different. So I'm at this angle here. and Yeah, a little different. Seam running down the middle. But it's... It looks like it's sealed. I know it's pretty banged up, but looks like it's been welded and resealed. And here's the top of the, and here's the top of the eight foot. So I think we're looking good. Driver should be here to pick up the uh, container, or at least the one container, in just a few minutes. going on the truck although he said it was pretty heavy but it made the weight all right so first pod is on the truck and he's about ready to leave. Uh, we did it. Uh, it was a couple hundred pounds over, but yeah, he said he could do it. So there it goes. All my stuff is leaving. But first container away, successfully. And um, anyway, um, I'm happy that it's off and going. I'm not worried about the eight foot container. I think it'll be fine. All right, goodbye, container. All right, but I am worried about the um, first 16 foot. I think it's heavier and I don't know what we're gonna do. So I'm now extremely nervous. Um, we just have to wait and see. All right, so um, driver should be here. I guess he is gonna pick up both containers at the same time, just like they did when they delivered it. So um, the smaller one I think goes on like a trailer. Um, I'm still pretty nervous about this. I just don't know how much it's gonna weigh. Um, I don't know. Like, uh, there's less single items in here that are super heavy. Really, it's just my desk is probably the heaviest thing. So I'm hoping that, um, you know, I'm hoping that means, you know, the rest that's in here, it's a lot of cardboard, mostly cardboard. It's the, my desk and a few of the bigger totes that we're in at the end. Those are the heaviest things. So I'm hoping that means maybe this is actually lighter than the other one. I don't know. In my head, it just seemed heavy. I don't know. Um, clearly, I'm not doing well at, at um, guessing this. So, so anyways, uh, I guess it doesn't matter. We'll see shortly. So it's uh, like 10 minutes to 5. So significantly later than I thought. Um, no big deal though, driver's here, his name's Eric. Um, seems cool, we parked uh, on Riverside. He's gotta unhitch the trailer that's gonna end up towing one of them, I assume this one. And then uh, he'll start loading them up. Uh, I gave him a heads up that I'm a little concerned about the weight. He understood, he confirmed what the other driver said that you can go over a little bit, but um, man, fingers crossed. I'm still super nervous and I've been anxious now for like four hours. So I hope this goes well um, and we'll see. And I'll, uh, stay tuned.
So the eight foot's going onto the trailer now. 16 foot is next. Moment of truth is coming up. All right, it made the weight and it's going up. It, uh, he's got the trailer hitched up. Both pods are on, both pods made weight. They are off to Florida shortly. All right, there goes. All right, there goes our stuff. Um, happy the containers are gone. Um, I was very stressed about that, as you could probably tell. Um, I guess just knowing that if we were overweight, they could have denied it. They could have said, nope, we're not taking it. Um, you know, empty it out and reschedule it. And that would have been a problem too, because my permit expired today. They're closed all weekend, et cetera, et cetera. Um, I found out from the second driver today, he says they should give you about 15 minutes 15 minutes to try to make weight. So if you're over 100 pounds, 200 pounds, they'll give you 15 minutes to try to unload that amount to make weight. Um, I mean, I'm sure we could have done it, um, but I'm glad we didn't have to. So thanks to the 1-800 pack rat drivers for being accommodating. We were technically over a little bit on both of our 16 foot containers. The eight foot container, I honestly don't know what we weighed in at, I do think that container was pretty heavy, but uh, again, according to the second driver, um, it uh, it didn't seem to bother him. He didn't he didn't care whatever weight it was when he picked it up. He had no quarrels. He didn't even say anything really. I had told him in advance that I was a little nervous about the weight. Um, so the way it broke down is when they picked up the original original when they picked up the third 16 foot container or I should say the third container, which was 16 foot. Um, that one was over by almost 200 pounds, according to the first driver, who was uh, Lewis, who was also the same guy who dropped off the containers. Um, I told him, man, I says, oh, I'm so... I says, are you kidding me? I thought that one was gonna be lighter. I kind of freaked out uh, internally is trying not to freak out to him, but I just says, okay, well now what happens? He goes, well, there's, there's kind of a gray area. He goes, he goes, I can take this. Uh, it's not a problem. I says, really? Like, you know, not like I thought he was, you know, risking his job or anything for me, but I didn't want him to get in trouble or anything like that. Again, I, I don't know how all this works. And I know sometimes um, people can, can just do nice things, let their emotions get the best of them, et cetera, et cetera. So I just wanted to make sure. And he goes, no, 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 we, we got like a gray area. It's totally cool. You're within limits. He goes, look, every driver is gonna make that determination. He goes, I think it's fine, no problem. So I was like, whew, okay. Dodged the bullet, but I says, oh man, I'm kind of worried about this other one. <laughs> he goes, well, you'll just have to see when they get here, the driver will be up later. As you guys saw from our footage earlier, um, they obviously took it. Driver wasn't here when I thought he was gonna get here. It came much later, so I spent the whole day worrying. Um, so let's fast forward to what you guys are looking for. They did take it. Now, how much was it over? Unfortunately, I don't know. I didn't really ask a lot about it because I was just happy he was t taking it. So basically, I could see the gauge that was on the side of the truck. I could see the 6,000 pound mark, or technically it was 8,000 pounds because the container weighs 2,000 pounds. So that's what he told me to look for. And I saw when he lifted it up, when it was completely off the ground and all, all four sides were up and fully supported by the truck. And it was basically 8,000, like it's almost right on, but it was slightly over. And I looked at it and it says, oh man, it's, it's barely over. The first one was over far more than that. So they have to take it, you know? So I was kind of like, all right, it's all right. He kind of looks at it and he goes, man, you're kind of over. I was like, but by how much? He goes, man, it's not bad. He goes, I've had it over a line, line and a half-ish, right? And a line being, again, on the gauge. So I don't know what each line represents. I think it's 100 pounds. And ours was really close to the first line. So I don't even think it was quite 100 pounds, but let's just round up. So I was 100 pounds over on the very first 16-foot container, the one we loaded this past Saturday. And I was almost, almost 200 pounds over on this third container, the second 16 foot container that we had delivered on Monday the 11th. So anyways, fast forwarding to now, uh, I am so happy that it's over. Um, as far as I'm concerned at this point, they took them, that means everything should be cool. They should go on their way to Florida 
and I should not see them again until our house is ready, till I call them back and I say, hey, deliver them to my home and we will unload them. Uh, we'll probably do them in spurts. I'll probably do the last 16 foot container first uh, and then work our way backwards. But either way, uh, as far as I know, if everything goes according to plan, that is the next time I will see them. Very happy about that. I'm still a little stressed to be honest, um, but I think it's like residual in a way. Um, I think I am relieved uh, of it. It's just my body's still tense. Um, so I'm hoping by tomorrow morning or tomorrow afternoon, um, it kind of settles in that, hey, you did it. They're gone. Uh, you packed them well. Um, big thank you to my friends. So my friend Matt, um, I'm so grateful for you. Um, you, you really saved me. Um, I know you know this, but you helped me get my stuff from my folks house. You helped me get basically all the stuff from the Santa Clarita storage unit. That was quite the ordeal. I know it was not fun. I know just, I know lots, of, I, I know how hard it was. So, um, I just want to say thank you. Um, also to my friend George and my friend Alex. Thank you, thank you, thank you. You guys also helped out tremendously on Saturday. And then Alex, you came here, I think three different days. Matt was here two days, George was here with the one, but you guys all helped out. Um, I just want to acknowledge what you did. I want to acknowledge that I couldn't have done it without you. I definitely need your guys' help. I'm so glad to have friends like you in my life that uh, that, that just came, came and answered the call. Now, having said that, I know some of you are watching like, hey, I didn't get a call or I didn't get asked. Um, there's obvious reasons for that. One, I wasn't trying to just call up all the troops. So the reason Matt helped me was because he had a trailer. I told him I had a couple oversized things, um, that I needed to get down and I just wasn't going to be able to do it in one car load with my, my car. And so he offered to help and it just made sense. And that's the way that part worked. As far as being here in Burbank and asking for help, the reason I didn't make an all call to everybody is because Mars and I had boxed everything in advance. I felt like we were ahead of the curve and because I had uh, a lot of good equipment, I had several um, full on, I don't know what you call them, but full on like dollies, basically hand trucks that converted into a flat level, you know, rolling cart combined with several floor dollies combined with multiple ramps that I had. I thought that would curb the process and it did. Uh, we did this quickly because of that. Um, also, clearing out the Santa Clarita unit, I am glad I took the advice of my friend Matt, who said, hey, each of us should drive their own car there just in case we need it, because we sure as heck did. Um, that was definitely one of many underestimates I did. I made several mistakes in this, which I'm very sorry for, but I'm so glad my friends hung in there with me. Um, so we were able to clear that unit out but back to being here in Burbank yeah because I had all this equipment because we were pre-packed the moving part actually didn't take that long it only took us a few hours and we filled an entire 16 foot container and an 8 foot container um and that's driving to and from Santa Clarita and that only took us an hour once we were in Santa Clarita we we removed like 50 totes and a bunch of stuff. So we did a really good job. I'm proud of everyone. I'm proud of all the guys and all the hard work they did. So for the day though, on Saturday, if I recall, we did everything in, 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 in probably under six hours, I think. I could be wrong by that. You know, they can correct me, but uh, I wanna say that's what we did. And that's a lot of stuff. We moved a ton of stuff. And unfortunately we moved even some stuff twice. Um, but uh, anyways, I'll, I'll stop rambling there. Uh, just thank you to everyone who helped. Um, and I got a lot of support though from a lot of people who didn't make it out for one reason or another, or I didn't ask them to, but they found out I was moving and they offered support and they offered um, to help and other things. So thank you for that though. I do appreciate it. Uh, I hope you understand um, why I may not have called upon you. And to me, it's perfectly fine. Like I'm, I'm I think it worked out for the best. I think we had what we needed. So um, all in all, back to the moment. I'm still feeling a little stressed, but I think it's just residual. I, I hope to wake up tomorrow feeling much better. As you can see, my beer's getting crazy. Uh, I at least need to try to brush it or something. It's getting out of control here. Um, looking scraggly. Um, <laughs> um, 
I don't know. I guess I'll stop there. I, I, I'm definitely rambling. I just wanted to um, thank everyone. I'm happy where we're at, though. There's not much left here. I have some cleaning to do, a little bit of touch-up paint. And that's it. That's it. We are we are out of here. Um, I can't believe we lived here almost 11 years. Um, like any place, you know, as much as we might complain about it now, just being too small or being a little outdated, um, it really did what we needed it to do for 11 years. So for that, I thank this place. Um, it was what we needed when we needed it and it's really worked out. So I'm glad that we have it. So anyways, I will stop there. I think this is probably a good ending for the video. Um, this encompasses the main move from Burbank. Again, all of the, all of our stuff is gone. Anything that we want in Florida, we have. There were a couple of small things that we couldn't fit, but we knew in advance that, hey, if they, if you can't fit everything, here are some items that you can sell or give away or whatever they may be. So those are the items that we're, we're doing. So we're exercising that option. So I feel pretty good about what we did. Um, excited to see it again in Florida when we can put it into our house. And um, yeah, looking forward to turning this place around here getting cleaned up and just moving out um getting a, a clear you know move out kind of a pass if you will i don't know what to call it um i'm meeting with the landlord uh shortly after our actual final date here uh hopefully there's no issues and then we just a nice clean break and uh our ties here will be done so anyways thank you for joining me uh sorry mars couldn't be in the video uh you guys were stuck with me the whole time but I hope you enjoyed watching. Hope you uh, got some good information about 1-800-PACK-RAT. I do recommend them. Thought they were helpful. Um, I know I didn't go into a lot of details about the cost. So, <laughs> so let me take a minute. So, um, it, it was somewhere around 4,000 or so for each container. That includes the eight foot, even though it's smaller than the 16. That's basically what it equated to. Um, we're, we're somewhere around 11,000 and, ch and change for the three. Now that's actually a really good rate. So normally what I was finding when I was getting close from these folks and other companies is it was close to uh, like 4,500 for an eight foot and a little over 5,000 for a 16. Um, I didn't really ask, but here's the deal. So when I called on Saturday, when I realized we were running out of room, I called them Talk to 1-800-PACK-RAT customer service and says, hey, I may need to swap out. That's what I originally thought. Thank goodness I didn't do that. I thought, hey, take away the eight, give me a 16, and I should do it. Obviously, in hindsight, uh, it wouldn't have. But that was my first thought. And she goes, well, here's the cost, blah, 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 blah. She gave me the number, and it was very high, very high, to swap it out. And I says, uh, that doesn't seem right, because you're charging me basically twice as much for a 16-foot that I already have. Um, and she goes, well, that's just the rate. So I was like, okay. So I says, don't do anything. Don't, I don't want anything. I get a call Monday from the original driver who dropped off the first two, uh, Lewis. He goes, hey, you're getting another container? I says, no, I didn't approve that. I says, I called to ask about one, but I didn't, I didn't confirm anything. He goes, oh, I got you on my schedule. I was like, ugh. I says, please don't deliver that. I says, let me call them. I call them back. I get a different person. This person was much friendlier, much nicer. So here's what my, here, here's what I think. It's, it's totally just my opinion. I could be, I could be wrong. But the staff I talked to Monday through Friday was far more knowledgeable, helpful, and friendly than the one person I talked to on Saturday. Now that could totally be an unfair assessment. Okay, I only called once. I only talked to one person. And it was a brief conversation. Um, but that's that was, that's my takeaway. That's all I can say. Um, hopefully your experience is different. Hopefully better. If you have to uh, talk to someone on the weekend. But that's that's just my opinion. And that's what I got. So I'm sharing with you. The lady on Monday, she gave me a number. Uh, again, it was close to 11,000. And I says, uh, I says, what's that for? She goes, well, that's to deliver a third container a 16 foot so you'd have 116 one eight and an additional 16 and that's the new number for all three to be transported to florida i says really 
And I didn't really want to say, you know, too much to her. Like, oh, that's not what the girl told me on Saturday. But I was like, oh, okay. Uh, just confirming one more time. That's for all three. About 11000 She goes, yeah. I says, okay. Book it, please. And uh, yes, send me that 16 foot. Uh, so as soon as I did that, I confirmed the 16 foot delivery. I met Lewis here within like two hours of that phone call. They were very fast on it. Lewis dropped off the third container. I went down to City Hall very quickly here in Burbank. I went in, uh, talked to the to the girl who was working the street permit thing, and I says, hey, I'm kind of in a bind. My last day is supposed to be today, Monday the 11th. I need an extension. Can you please help me out? Here's what happened. She's She looked it up, she typed some things in. She goes, oh yeah, 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 um, cool. When do you need it to? And I says, Friday the 15th, please. Uh, and that was really quick and easy. I asked her what I should do about the signage. She goes, I'll just, just rewrite it basically if you can or scratch it out and rewrite whatever i says okay cool so i did that that all worked out great um uh, i think i mentioned earlier the cones you can rent them through a place the city recommends but luckily i was able to get them uh from a contact i know uh so they didn't cost me anything so that was good i called them though and it says hey i need to borrow your cones for another if like Oops, sorry about that. I need to borrow your cones for like another five days or so. Uh, they were cool with that too. So once we got that settled, then the rest was history. So that that's the numbers game. I know I'm not giving you exact. Um, I just don't have it in front of me. But it was it was ten thousand. I could be wrong. Ten thousand seven hundred something. So I'm calling it eleven for all three. All right. So I was gonna have a uh, like a frozen pizza thing. Turns out I don't have any. So at that point, I was already craving pizza. So went out and got some. Thought about maybe watching the Batman movie tonight. Um, so pizza, Batman, how can we combine those? Into this. <laughs> this was the Bat Calzone pizza or something like that. It's pretty funny. I think it's called Batman Calzoni. But uh, there it is in all of its glory. <laughs> Pretty hilarious. Um, so there it is. And this will be my dinner and lunch and possibly dinner. Hey guys, I know you just listened to me ramble for like 20 plus minutes, but um, I didn't do an outro for this video, so I'm adding one here. Um, if you want more information, though, check out our website, natanmars.com. That's N-A-T-E and m-a-r-z-z dot -Z com and in our blog I have one uh, titled since since I know you were wondering or since you were wondering or something like that and I break down all the costs uh, to the penny I share with you guys everything that we paid so that you have a reference point because again one thing that frustrated me when I was trying to do research about moving and what things were going to cost etc was the lack of information out there so I wanted to try to do better and provide you guys with that. So um, for those of you that are interested, check that out. A um, lot, of, lot of details in there. What we paid for 100 pack rat, the, um, I think the permitting, uh, also shipping our car, um, everything. So check it out for more details. Otherwise, for those that sat through this, this is one of our longest videos ever. Um, thank you so much. We appreciate it. Um, I assume a lot of you guys are using it as resources um but those of you that are just watching because you you follow the channel off um i appreciate it i hope it was um somewhat entertaining um it was really meant to be more informative like i said um trying to provide something useful for those who may be moving in the future but either way thank you guys very much and until next time we'll see you there